Good afternoon, all. Camelback Trading.org coming to you this Friday afternoon, September 15th. We are looking at window traders. Market profile of the ES and the NQ. Sellers took control of this day from the um, opening bell. It was a very uh, um, accommodating day as they didn't relent really at all. Um, only a couple of times did buyers even try. Tried to take back the trend day in G to fail. Um, couldn't even get back to try to take back the single prints in H. So NQ, uh, ES ends as a triple distribution day. Now righty has a double distribution and 10 wide. NQ is a double distribution, but no wide pock. We're a triple distribution because we never filled these single prints in H and we still have the set up, up above us. Um, in C period. Turned out to be a decent week after that really horrible trade I made in ES um, on Wednesday, I believe it was. Battled back. Uh, had a really good day today. Ended up losing on the week 78 points in ES, but I made 241 in NQ. So net net I actually made um, a little about 900 bucks on the week. So no complaints after uh, that trade that cost me a lot the other day. I did nothing but short today. I had two thoughts of longs. One was if we popped above K and L's high and above the 144 and M to get the single prints, I didn't do it, thank goodness, because that would have been a disaster. And the other one was also a possibility of a sh uh, to take the long in G to fill the single prints and then look for a short for the afternoon rally high. I'm glad I didn't do that one. Did very well on shorts all day, but I did miss a couple, especially in H period on both of these indices. Should have took a short in. I was waiting for the single prints to fill. I thought they might fill. But then I was going to short it because I thought it would be the afternoon rally high. So both ES and NQ, I'm waiting for them to fill to short. Didn't happen. So when that didn't happen, I should have at least started a, um, a starter short in H period in both of these in case we don't take out G's high. Well, I didn't do that. Then to compound matters, we should have, when, I, when we broke D's low to get going again. And for uh, NQ, when they broke E's low, should have been on that. So I missed a really, really good play twice in H period. But the rest of the day, I nailed it. I mean, I'm not going to go over all of them because all I did was short today. Both of these indices I shorted. Um, a, B, C, a, a mo the majority in the morning, A, B, C, D, I shorted both of them and did well. Any kind of pushes up, I was looking for shorts on a day like today. Why? Well, we had lower indices. You know that checklist sheet we talk about all the time? Well, it was it was in favor of the sellers, everything, right? So there's 10 things on it. We didn't have a gap, okay? And we didn't have a highest accepted price. But the sellers other than that had value, overnight low, the opening, IB low, one time framing down most of the day, the indices were down, and single prints and pock lowered. When you have that much info and MGI on one side, to me, to me, you should be looking on that side to trade. Okay, that's how I look at it. So, and that's what I did. And it turned out to be a good day and, and got myself in the black for the week. We have a double a double inside week for both ES, SPY, NQ, and triple Q. That's very rare. Compound that, you have the Fed next Wednesday. Now, the big question is, will we come out of these this double inside week? I feel like double secret probation from Animal House. Will we come out of it with any kind of force prior to Wednesday? I wouldn't be surprised if we try to get out of this balance, maybe one way or the other prior to it. But the bigger question is, right, we always say you go with an inside day, week, month, whatever, and monitor it for continuation or lack of. Well, I'm, I'm curious to see if we do come out of it, do we get continuation prior to Wednesday? We had a trend day down that held. So both upside trend days and downside trend days have held exactly 33.3% of the time, both of them, so far this year. Um, volume is over 100 million. Now, the last time we did a 
over 100 million uh, that got into the top 10 was June 16th, three months ago, and I think it was the expiration day. Now, I don't know if we're going to crack it, uh, the other one. We have to get over 112 million to crack the top 10. So we'll see if SPY is going to do that in the after hours. Um, let's go give you destinations, and then we'll go over uh, all our indices charts. One other thing, please put on your calendar. Um, I, you know, because a lot of people that watch these videos um, aren't in my room. I'm going to be doing a webinar on Thursday night, September 28th. At, not Thursday night. Thursday afternoon, September 28th at 4.30 Eastern Time with Terry Lieberman, who is the owner of this window trader that I use. Guy is brilliant when it comes to the market profile and trading and just his insight into everything. So we're going to use, it depends how long we want to do it, if there's a lot of good people in there and questions, um, going over the profile, go over trading days, what to look, what we're going to be looking for in the fourth quarter. And this is good. It'll be after the Fed meets next week, so it's the 28th. So um, hopefully you can join us or put that on your calendar. As far as destinations, in SPY, upside, you have two sets of single prints, 444, 19 to 28. Second set is 445.39 to 57. And in today's high is a weekly high of 451. Oh, no, it's not. 451.08 is a weekly high. Wait a second. I didn't put today's high in. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> 451.08 is a weekly high, but I didn't put today's high at 447.48 in there. I apologize. So before, uh, yeah, you have the single prints. And then we have uh, 447.48, today's high, and then that weekly high. Now, the downside, we have two weekly lows very close together. And now, again, that's because of the dividend, but it doesn't matter. For today's low, 442.92 is a weekly low. And then we have 442.75, weekly low. Then we have 442.46, daily low. And 441.96.9 wide from August 28th. NES. We have today's low of 94, which is a weekly low, and then filling the rollover gap at 77.50. On the upside in ES, we have two sets of single prints, 0725 to 0775, 1950 to 21, and then 4050 is today's high, and I'm carrying forward today's overnight 17-wide pock of 58.75. We never... If I can get this to move, got that. Well, it's a lot higher. Here it is. We never got it. Okay? So, we never saw the opening, by the way, after the opening. So, let's go to the charts now and break them down. So, IWM, once again, halfway through this month, the monthly balance since May of 22, 2022. The, the worry for the bulls is they got close three months ago to this monthly top. And now they've rolled over. Now, they had an inside month last month. Halfway through this month, they have another inside month. So are they going to hold these two monthly lows and then rotate back up and try to come out of the balance to the upside? Because if we take out these two monthly lows, well, then the natural progression would be to maybe test the bottom of this balance. Okay? which is 17 months. So right now, pure balance with a, a, a monthly uh, inside month. Weekly balance, five weeks. Doesn't it seem like IWM and uh, Righty are in perpetual balance? And the daily, once again, balance. Okay, six, seven day balance. Now the one concern, and we talked about this a couple of times, is righty the canary in the coal mine? They keep testing this 200-day moving average over the last, uh, you know, couple of weeks. So that's definitely a cause for concern. They've held it, if you notice, right? We got down there August 18th, August 25th, and now twice in September so far. September 13th and today, September 15th. Is this a cause for concern? Remains to be seen. Balance on all three time frames. NQ and triple Q, three-month balance, including this month, okay? 
Weekly, a double inside week. Balance. So again, I'm looking to come out of this with some pretty good fireworks when we do. Now remember, if we come out of the inside week, Monday or Tuesday, right? Before the Fed, unless we take out the week of August 28th high or, the week, uh, or that week's low, you're still going to be in balance. So that's why I'm saying you're, we're looking to come out with some pretty good tempo and volume out of a double inside week. But if we do it prior to Wednesday, I'm wondering if we're going to come out of the balance high or low. And that goes for SPY and ES also. So balance on the weekly and the daily is also balance. Okay? I would now call it three, six, seven, and eight day balance. Okay? I would say yesterday's high is the top of the balance. And did they take out that low? They did not. And uh, the low of September 7th is the low of it. So, again, all we keep saying is balance. We're in balance in everything. Talk about a market still needing more MGI. And then for us, same on the monthly, three-month balance, inside month so far, halfway through the month. Weekly, now let's, you know, let me go back here one time. You realize we had, um, we had the COVID low. So since the COVID low, right, when we finally went balance and then bull, we've gone bull, balance, bull, all-time high, balance, then we went bear a couple of times. We haven't been bear, though, now on the monthly in ES and SPY since October of 2022. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that is that's a year ago almost. So... It's going to be interesting to see if the bulls come out of this three-month balance to the upside or to the downside. So monthly is balanced, the weekly a double inside week. Same thing I just said in Qs and NQ. We might come out of the inside week, but will we come out of the three-week balance prior to Wednesday? Right? Remains to be seen. Right? you got to watch for head fakes prior to Wednesday. Right? They might try to force it down. But then all of a sudden snap back in waiting for the Fed on Wednesday, which is such a joke. I would think there will be no raise this time, but I certainly think there will be one more raise most likely in November. Right? They meet November and December. I, I, I'm still going to stick to that. So balance on the monthly, a double inside week on the daily, which is firmly balanced, and balance on the daily. Okay? The daily... Um, Wait a second. What's today's high? 447.48? Why is that showing? <clears throat> we didn't have it. Oh, I know. Oh, we have a dividend gap. I apologize. I'm like, why is there a gap here? Okay. We talk about this from time to time. I forgot to mention it to the room. This is important. So not only is today's high 447.48, Yesterday's low was 447.71. That's not right. It was 71, not 72. So believe it or not, we do have a dividend gap, right? It doesn't matter that it was just caused by the dividend. It's a gap. It's small. It's only 23 cents, but it's there. For, uh, now, ES doesn't have it, but SPY does. So we are in a three, eight-day balance. Yesterday is the high of it, and... September 7th is the low of it. I hope you guys and guys had a great day in week trading. Rest up. Thank you for liking and subscribing to this channel. Come check us out at camelbacktrading.org. I think it's the best bargain out there, man. Oh, man. We really try uh, to help every trader succeed in this trading room. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.